The handheld gaming scene is absolutely exploding right now. Gamers and manufacturers alike are clearly hyped. But here's the looming question. As these portable powerhouses gain popularity, so does the insatiable appetite of modern games for VRAM. Now, popular handhelds like the ROG Ally, Lenovo Legion Go, and beloved Steam Deck all share one common thread, and that is 16 gigabytes of total memory shared between system and graphics. So as we barrel towards 2025 and beyond, are their days numbered? And for those of us still rocking these 16 gig devices, is there anything we can do besides, you know, downloading more RAM? Uh, spoiler, that won't work, but we'll dive in and see what we can do. Think of VRAM or Video Random Access Memory as dedicated muscle memory for your GPU. In a traditional gaming PC, you've got your regular system RAM for the CPU tasks and a separate, often faster chunk of dedicated memory on your graphics card, and that's the VRAM. Both are volatile, meaning poof, data is gone with the power uh, when it cuts out. So system RAM juggles instructions and data for the CPU, while VRAM specifically handles graphics intensive tasks like loading and storing of textures. Now, here's where it gets a little sticky. When your GPU runs out of VRAM, it will often try to lean on the system RAM. Now, the problem is the system RAM is significantly slower and constantly shuffling data back and forth between the two, and that introduces an annoying latency. This can manifest as those dreaded stutters, drastically lower frame rates, and even full-on game or system crashes. And if you do manage to keep the game chugging along, you might be greeted by muddy, low-resolution textures that can look like they've escaped from a PS1 game at times, as vividly demonstrated in Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Now take the Asus ProArt PX13 laptop for example. On paper, with dedicated NVIDIA graphics, it should handle the game, but the 6GB VRAM limit on this mobile card, coupled with the game's crazy VRAM demands even at a measly 800p low with DLSS, forces constant swapping with the system RAM. The result, a sort of smooth experience but with textures popping in and out like crazy and those truly awful low detail models. Now, now, switching to the integrated AMD 880M graphics, which has an access to a total of 24 gigabytes of RAM, similar to the ROG Ally X, tells a different story. Even when dedicating 8 gigabytes to the GPU, the frame rate might be lower than the 4050, but the experience is much more consistent. You can even bump up those texture settings, and at the same time the resolution, leading to a much cleaner image. Now, this pattern holds true when comparing the ROG Ally, and often paired with the leaner Bazite OS and the Legion Go S, with its less powerful Z2 Go chip, but with a whopping 32 gigs of RAM. On the ROG Ally, we see frustrating hard starters and crashes, making the games unplayable. Meanwhile, the Z2 Go might not deliver the highest of frame rates on a handheld, but its generous 32 gigabytes of RAM allows for cranking up of textures and enjoying a significantly smoother experience than the generationally more powerful ROG Ally. The RAM difference is making a real impact. So, you're wondering what you can actually do about this. Well, you could always Google download more RAM and call it a day. Seriously though, there are some practical steps you can take, and one more drastic option you might want to seriously consider. So, the old rule of thumb for the dedicated VRAM on 16 gig devices like the ROG Ally or Go was around 5 to 6 gigs, but as Jedi Survivor clearly, brutally illustrates, uh, that's often no longer enough. At some point, you'll simply run out of total memory, and the games will crash regardless of your VRAM allocation. Now, some newer games even require the VRAM allocation to be set to auto because they need a minimum of 16 gigabytes of system memory to the system or what it will see. If these are your go-to games, you might be stuck hunting for override patches or just leaving it on auto, despite the potential for stutters I've personally experienced with that setting. Now, if you're not chasing the absolute bleeding edge of handheld gaming, the new sweet spot does seem to be in the similar uh, one to four gigabyte range, similar to the Steam Deck's configuration. Personally, in 2025, I'll likely stick to four gigabyte on my 16 gigabyte devices and then switch to auto when absolutely necessary or just avoid those games with the hefty RAM requirements on handhelds altogether. Now, when you're in-game, remember that texture quality and shadows are the biggest VRAM hogs. 
Also, using upscaling technologies like FSR or XESS actually increases the overall VRAM usage, and if you're trying to squeeze out even more frames with frame generation, yep, that's another VRAM guzzler too. Now, resolution is another obvious drain, and dropping down to 720p on the ROG Ally can be somewhat acceptable, uh, but when you combine it with upscaling and low textures, the visuals can become a blurry mess, especially in handhelds with a larger screen. It's a constant balancing act. Now, feeling like you're backed into a corner? Well, dear viewer, you might be in luck. There's a fantastic little Linux distro called Bazite. Think of it as a wildly popular Steam Deck operating system, but with broader support for major handhelds and a ton of quality life improvements over Windows. Now, there are some significant downsides to consider. If you are a heavy online gamer and play titles with anti-cheat or systems that just don't play nicely on Linux altogether, you're out of luck. No Call of Duty, Destiny 2, GTA 5, Fortnite, and the list goes on. However, if your handheld gaming primarily revolves around offline or single player experiences, you'll be rewarded with significantly less system resource usage compared to Windows and a much smoother, often stutter-free experience in games that would otherwise be a frustrating mess on Windows. Elden Ring is a prime example. It runs far more consistently on Bazite or the Steam Deck, even compared to more powerful Windows laptops or desktops at times. Personally, I've been daily driving Bazite and SteamOS beta on my handhelds, and I haven't really looked back. While I do miss Game Pass support, I have other systems for that, and you can also dual boot Windows and Linux to get the best of both worlds if you're feeling adventurous and want to keep up with your Game Pass subscription. Now, even though I'm a Linux convert on my handhelds, I also have a couple of gaming desktops that I can tap into for game streaming. Of course, you'll need a solid home Wi-Fi connection for this to be a viable option, but streaming can bypass a lot of compatibility issues and hardware limitations, especially when you're trying to play something on the couch on the handheld. The setup does allow me to enjoy games natively when possible, uh, but it does provide a pretty decently fallback system to Windows only handheld titles if you do the streaming. However, if you're playing competitively of Call of Duty or ranked games, you might not want to because of the streaming delay and latency that that can introduce no matter how fast your home network is. Now it's so easy to blur the lines between what we need and what we want, especially when it comes to tech. And as someone who makes YouTube videos highlighting the often subtle differences between these devices, I'm just as guilty of feeding into that hyper consumption or fear of missing out FOMO mentality. So my honest advice is if you're eyeing a new handheld, just wait, sleep on it, do so much research that you're almost sick of it, and then make your decision. These devices are expensive and will likely continue to get pricier, especially in some parts of the world. This isn't something you should be treating as an annual upgrade. Uh, you should be aiming to get maybe three, potentially four years of use out of it. Now, batteries will degrade, but you can always replace them down the line or with battery banks. Now, if you have an older device or no device at all, my absolute recommendation would be to consider one with 24 gigs of RAM like the Ally X or even better, one with 32. That extra memory provides a crucial buffer for both VRAM and system RAM. While I hesitate to use the term future-proof, a 32 gigabyte device will undoubtedly be more usable in performance and longevity than a 16 gigabyte device. How long will that last? Hopefully, maybe until at least the mid-cycle refresh of the next generation consoles but even that is murky at best so are 16 gigabyte handhelds doomed it's a bit of a yes and no you'll definitely hit limitations and even brick walls with some newer titles but let's not forget the vast library of pc games available from classics to modern gems I personally love revisiting the Xbox 360 era games on handhelds. They usually run beautifully at high settings and frame rates and some of them you might have missed entirely. Now, ultimately, the best choice is what works for you. If you already own a 16 gig handheld, optimizing your setup by tweaking settings or exploring alternatives like Bazite can make a real difference. If you do decide to upgrade, please consider selling your old device on Facebook or local groups. You'll help someone else enjoy it at a much lower cost and put some cash back into your pocket to offset your new purchase. And finally, if a new handheld is out of reach and it's your only gaming option, I'd strongly suggest trying out NVIDIA GeForce Now, even just for a month to play the game you're itching to experience. Sometimes it can be better than nothing. 
That'll wrap things up for this video, and I'm really curious to hear about your experiences with 16 gig handhelds in the comments. Now, are you considering an upgrade? If so, which one? And if you're sticking with your current device, what are some hidden gems or older games that you'd recommend to others to check out to tackle their backlogs? And as always, I hope you all have a great day.